Let's talk about the Doughty Space Dwarf battle line. How are the foot troops of the League shaping up in the new Votan Codex? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're continuing in our look at the new squads and talking about how the foot troops of the Leagues of Votan, the Hearthkin Warriors, will be shaping up on the battlefields of Warhammer 40k. There's a lot to talk about with our standard issue augmented clone short people. They've got by far the most war gear choices in the book, plus a massive amount of synergies with the stratagems and the characters of the leagues, so they do have rather a lot of options to cover. In the video we'll talk over their datasheet and unit choices, perhaps some of the best options out of the many buffs and synergies available to the unit, and then go through a few example squad builds. Lots to talk about, so let's jump straight in. So, Hearthkin Warriors are currently the newest troops choice in Warhammer 40k, 11 points per model, and 10-20 to 20 dwarves in the unit. Their stat line is one of some slow but solid light infantry. They move 5 inches and can only advance 3, hit on 3s, strength and toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 4 plus save, augmented by void armour. The Thane's 2 wounds with 3 attacks and a 4 plus invul as well, so he is a fair bit tougher to put down. For their standard weapons, they are either armed with an Autoc pattern bolter, 2 standard shots at 24 inches, with strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 1, no extra special rules. Or they can swap that out for 1 point extra for an Ion Blaster at 18 inches, 1 shot at strength 5, AP minus 2 and damage 2. Aside from that, they each get the Autop Bolt Pistol for a single shot at the same profile as the Bolter if they're locked in combat, and Concussive Grenades at strength 5, AP minus 1, so they do look like they're usually going to be worth throwing instead of a gun if you can. Then, for every 10 models in the squad, two of them can take a different option each, either a Hylas Auto Rifle, the L7 Missiles, the Plasma Beamer, or the Rail Rifle. You can't double up on them though, so you can't say have two Rail Rifles if you want. Otherwise, there's a few interesting squad upgrades that sort of look a bit kill teamy. One can take a Medipack, one a Comms Array, and one a Pan Spectral Scanner. The Medipack for 5 points allows you to ignore the first wound taken in the unit, so quite a nice defensive upgrade. The comms array allows more rerolls, and the scanner allows ignore cover. Then the thing can take an ion or plasma pistol, and then a concussion gauntlet or plasma axe or sword in his other hand. Overall I'd say they're a moderately sturdy troops choice. Void armour definitely helps, but they might well get cleared out against some low AP things, and they can hit at least fairly hard with their short ranged weaponry, particularly with judgement tokens. Here's a few of their profiles of their special and melee weapons. The Hylas Auto Rifles, 3 shots at 24 inches, strength 6 and AP minus 2, a little bit more anti-infantry fire there. The missile launchers 10 points for a choice of shots at 30 inches, either D6 shots at strength 5, AP minus 1, or a single one that's basically a crack missile at strength 9. 30 inch range isn't bad for the leagues, plus that's a really nice varied profile. Finally there's the Etikan Plasma Beamer, 10 points for a single shot at 18 inches, that one hits at strength 8, AP minus 3, damage 2, and the beam weapons are the ones that give the other chance to hit other things along their course. For the Thane gear, the Concussion Gauntlet's 10 points extra. That one will have him striking at strength 7, AP minus 2, damage 2. Not a bad generalist profile, but maybe not going to change the world. Otherwise, the Plasma Sword and Plasma Axe are both 5 points each. They're both AP minus 3 and damage 1. The Sword gives you 1 attack extra. The Axe gives you 1 more pip of strength. Out of the two, I'd probably say the sword is slightly better out of those, though it kind of depends on what target you're hitting. The ion pistols and plasma pistols are 5 points extra. The ion gives you a single shot at strength 5, AP minus 2, damage 2. And the plasma pistol has strength 8, AP minus 3, damage 2, but is locked to only 6 inch range. Finally, we did briefly mention what the squad gear did. It's all just 5 points extra, and as well as allowing its passive benefits, it also allows you one stratagem each, some of which can be quite good. That is really quite a lot of war gear there, so it is going to be interesting to see how people set up their squads. My instinct is that the Bolters are probably going to win out against the Ion Blasters slightly. The extra 6 inch range is pretty big on Votan with their small movement, and mass low strength shots still seem pretty scary when they could be auto wounding potentially on 4s. I'd say the Bolters are probably going to be better for slightly more backfield units, or ones that aren't planning on just charging straight down the centre of the board. Perhaps the Ion Blasters could have a bit more use in Sagittor units, Perhaps for a big buffed up squad heading down the centre of the board with durability buffs, or maybe the Ime conglomerates where they get an extra 4 inch range. I feel like the extra point that you pay just makes them a little bit more niche. Out of the hunter weapons, I perhaps feel that that Magna Rail rifle seems to be the standout choice. The range isn't super great at 24 inches, but it is very dangerous. Punching straight through invul saves with AP-4 is pretty big. Plus with judgement tokens, it does have a pretty reasonable chance of dealing the splash damage, like the big one on the Lamb Fortress. So with D3 plus 3 damage, you could be splatting 5 light infantry, 
if the stars do align and you roll well. After the other options, I feel like the highlight is okay for the 5 points, just adds a bit more of what the unit will be trying to do already. I think the missiles look really interesting for 10 points as well, the range is really good and they're flexible. The beamer seems perhaps the most niche of the choices, I think on a slow unit you're usually going to struggle to skewer multiple targets, and while some of the beam stratagems are quite good fun, this squad can't exactly spam them, you could only take 2 in a 20 man unit. I feel like the rail rifle and the missile launchers are perhaps the most interesting options. For the squad gear, I feel like the medipack is the standout choice, 5 points to basically save a dwarf's life for guaranteed is pretty much auto include, and if the squad isn't wiped in one turn, it could do that multiple times. The model regen stratagem is very cool as well. I feel like the commons array and the scanner are maybe a bit more niche, pretty good on big units I suppose, but I feel like they're maybe a bit superfluous on smaller squads. Finally for the Thane upgrades, I feel like it's often just going to be the best choice to keep him stock. The melee weapons seem interesting maybe if you were playing Kronos Hegemony. In that league, even the standard issue dwarves seem like at least a fairly credible melee threat. Otherwise, I think a bit of combat gear would be probably a good idea if you are taking a big 20-man squad. There's a bit more chance of people trying to charge them and then not all of them being wiped out, so being able to hit back at least a little bit hard won't hurt. I think if you really want to bring the melee pain, then one command point to upgrade a concussion gauntlet to the half fist seems interesting. That'll make his attack strength 8, AP minus 3, and damage 3, even better with judgment tokens, and that just seems an absolute world away from strength 7, AP 2, and damage 2. Otherwise, for Thane gear, the pistols just seem a little bit close range to be worth the cost, with only a 5 inch movement, getting in 6 inch range for the plasma one seems optimistic, and for another option for Thane relic gear that you can buy in for 1 CP, you could give a big unit the Grey Crest for a minus 1 to hit outside 12 inches. If you want to layer lots of buffs on one stacked up squad marching up the board, that one seems like it could be worth it. Lots of war gear choices there, we'll go through them a bit more with some example squad loadouts. Before that though, I thought we'd talk about some of the many buffs and synergies that you can put on the units, things like characters, stratagems and the individual leagues. First up, I think judgement tokens are going to be very important if you want to deal damage with these. Mass low strength shots are going to deal loads of damage if they can auto wound regularly. And there is something pretty silly about the idea of your basic troopers auto wounding on a 4 plus versus battle tanks. I think a lot of the time it's not necessarily going to propel them to be genuinely amazing damage dealers, but I think they could certainly shave off quite a lot more than you might expect for regular foot troops. Character wise, as the standard troops, they work with most of them. A Carl or High Carl seems to be a good one if you want to build round mass units on foot. Particularly his shield crest aura is very nice. A 5 plus inball save will make these guys quite a lot harder to remove. Plus, he can be handing out judgment tokens and give them reroll ones or full rerolls to boot. For the Great Ethereum League, Uthar could be okay as well. I think in general, he's going to be happiest using that auto hit of a 6 on the big scary rail cannon of a land fortress, but it could still be very nasty on a standard Magna Rail Rifle. Again, that's going to be auto-wounding with a Judgement token, punching through inball saves, and then dealing splash damage to kill multiple models if needed. The Grimno works quite well with them as well. They could be fortified for toughness 5 and a 6 plus save. Again, seems fine on a big 20 strong unit. Having one nearby could cancel enemy maledictions if relevant, and also his morale boost actually isn't too bad on big mass units, they might well be failing morale tests if there are 20 of them. The Iron Master could be okay, he could give them plus 1 to hit, though I think usually is going to be best off just sitting around with land fortresses. And there are a couple of handy warlord traits, shoot while doing actions is very relevant for them, and I guess double obsec could be helpful, though I think that that's usually going to be better employed with Hearthguard. Next up, to make up for their lack of speed, they certainly could be transported into battle. The Sagittal seems like the better choice for them. It allows them to break into small squads, which kind of have value all of their own. I think you could genuinely just split them into two squads in two Sagittals, have one of them get out turn one and just hold a home field objective, and the Sagittal could just run around being a gunboat after that. It could allow you to hold a home field objective with only five models rather than ten. Otherwise though, the Sagittal does seem like a good way to get them towards the middle of the board, hopefully zoom up towards an objective, potentially if it gets shot dead you could try and pile out behind line of sight blocking terrain, and if it doesn't just use it as a bit of a battlefield bunker to jump out of and shoot the enemy. 3 inch disembark plus 5 inch movement isn't too bad movement for these guys. I feel like a squad broken down into two Sagittals seems like quite a reasonable inclusion for the list, I'm not sure if you'd really want to go into a whole army of them though. Finally, you could also put them inside a land fortress. They seem generally strong, so it doesn't really hurt to have an obsec unit inside them, I guess. Trundle up to an objective while frying things with the railgun, and then, as it will probably survive with that massive toughness that it has, you can jump a unit out to secure an objective, maybe lay down some anti-infantry fire. 
or even screen the fortress from attack. I feel that might be a better thing to do with things like berserks though, who actually have some crazy melee damage, and that seems like one of the better ways to get them into combat. Stratagems next, and as core troops they have access to a crazy amount of stuff, a few real standout ones, but then a whole ton of things that are either a little bit niche or a bit more questionable value. You really can't say that these guys don't have enough options available to them though. My picks for some of the most relevant ones are the 1 CP to reroll all hits versus a judgement token unit. If you had a 20 man squad firing out 40 odd shots, that would in theory get you 30 AP minus 1 auto wounds on your target. Pretty mad stuff. For 2 CP you've got the option to shoot into combat or 1 command point to fall back and shoot. Both are great if you are going to be investing in these guys, as it ensures that the opponent can't just ruin the unit's firepower just literally by tagging them. I think the one command point option to return a fire is pretty nasty. It's only one CP on Hearthkin Warriors, so if they get shot by something in the enemy shooting phase, they might well just be able to turn around and tear chunks out of the unit that attacked them. One CP for a full round of shooting on just about anything is good, and if the enemy isn't careful, then it could be really devastating with these guys. Finally, for my favourite stratagems, there's Combat Surgery. Resurrect D3 models with the medic. It happens in the command phase as well, so it could allow them to chain out towards an objective. 1 CP for potentially 22 points of models back on the board doesn't seem terrible in any case though. Otherwise, I'll whiz through the other options quickly. There's a 1 CP one for iron weapons to deal a mortal wound on sixes. Seems almost auto used on a really big iron squad with judgment support. There's 1 CP to heroically intervene. That could certainly surprise someone, and their combat profile is good enough to at least threaten light infantry. There's 2 CP for a transhuman one while the Thane lives. A bit on the pricey side, but you can maybe justify it on huge squads. It gets a bit cheaper if there's less than 6 of them left. There's a comms array one to cancel auras, which occasionally could be powerful, but quite niche. An spec scan type one with panspectral warning could intercept some enemy troops if necessary. The concussion grenades can throw a minus 1 to hit and unable to overwatch for an enemy. If you can use it on a really big unit like a knight, then the minus 1 to hit could be worth it just in itself. There's one for a 6 plus fail no pain and ignoring morale. A kind of borderline defensive one, but could be good if you're being shot by lots of damage one things. One CP to auto hit something with Hunter's Mark, might be okay for the rail rifle. Two CP for Kin Bond, if you get two core units in melee, then you get to re-roll the wound roll with both. Maybe a bit less outstanding on these guys, but they could be a factor in triggering it for the Berserkers or the Hearthguard. And finally for one CP, there's exploding sixes to hit with the Bolters, and you get double exploding sixes versus enemy units with 11 plus models. Those hits don't get to auto wound, I think it's usually just going to be worth it versus hordes that one. I'll probably focus on the top 5, maybe the Ion 1 if you have the Ion weapons, but it's worth keeping their crazy roster of options in mind. Next up, again as core infantry, the leagues can all offer them some interesting things, all of them do at least something for their core battle line. The Great Aetherian League will have a bit more judgement to go around, never a bad thing with the low weapon strength. Plus they should be able to farm out more CP for the good stratagems, count as extra models on objectives, and the single reroll I think is particularly nice for the Hearthkin Warriors, really incentivizes you to throw something like a rail rifle or a missile launcher into the squad. The trans Hyperion Alliance gives you plus one to hit if you're below your starting numbers, maybe a bit more likely to happen on the Warriors than other units, but still a lot of the time in 40k you either have full numbers or are dead. Otherwise their sixes to hit cause you an extra AP minus one, not bad on bolters, and they do get a bit more damage against judgement token units. The 5 plus save against mortal wounds and redeploying could also be handy, though I must admit their main league bonus I don't think is particularly exciting. Next up there's the Irani Surta regulars, they always count as shooting at a judgement token unit, so 6s to hit should always auto wound even if you had limited support, but perhaps more excitingly their hearthkin go up to toughness 5, which combined with void armour and the other durability things that this unit can get, does make them feel like they could slog up the board a bit easier than some of the other factions. Not bad for a unit that short range is perhaps going to mean that it takes a punch and then has to hit back hard. The Emi conglomerate just seems all round strong. 5 plus invuls on the unit is just crazily nice to have for free, though I suppose you can get that from a Carl. Otherwise though, the extra 4 inch range is very relevant, particularly on the Ion Blasters, and they do get a bit more AP at close range as well, allowing them to hit back the enemy very hard if they do get too close. The other support options aren't particularly relevant, but there is three really cool things. 22 inch ion blasters do seem quite scary, particularly when they're AP-3 at 11 inch. Finally, the Cronus Hegemony are the melee Votan, an extra plus one attack, strength and AP if they're against judgement token units. 
and I feel like that is enough to make even the standard Kinsmen into fairly high melee threats. Three attacks at strength 5, maybe with AP minus 1, seems like quite a nice combo, particularly if backed up by something a bit more bitey on the Thane. In general, I think all of them are at least kind of handy for these, maybe the Great Ethereum League and the Ime Conglomerate perhaps being particularly handy. Moving on, I thought we could take a look at a few squad build ideas, perhaps a standard battle line one, a couple of Sagittor squads, and then one big and chunky 20 dwarf high investment unit. First up, here's an idea just for a standard slot filler dwarf force. Say you want to run a battalion, and you mainly want to focus on the elites and damage dealers. What's the best way to get good value out of a minimum sized 10 dwarf Votan squad? The loadout I've gone for are 10 Hearthkin with bolters, the extra range over the ion blasters if there's no plan to necessarily get them massively close, one medic to take hits, and the big 20 point magna rail rifle just to make sure that the unit can genuinely be threatening if they need to, and it would perhaps be particularly nice with the Great Ethereum League to allow you to reroll one failed hit or wound. That'll be a battalion worth of troops filled for 405 points. I think even if you're trying to keep costs right down, I'd still want to keep the medic, as the durability that it adds seems very nice. I guess perhaps if you did just want the single heavy weapon in there, then you could perhaps think about the missile launcher instead. That one might be a bit more fitting for a bit more of a backfield objective camping unit, a little bit lower investment, and also a bit more range. Otherwise, I think if you wanted to build out further, you could think about a comms array, scanner, or the high last rifle. All of those seem at least fairly cheap and effective for what they do, though they will be slightly increasing the squad's cost for no extra toughness. Next up, here's just one idea for a squad piling out of two Sagittors. This one's got 10 Hearthkin with the Ion Blasters for 120, again just the one Medic, and then two Sagittors in the fast attack slot, 220 points with their Matter Auto Cannons, and the way it works is that you divide one squad at deployment, and each of them becomes mini 5-man squads riding in each Sagittor. The Sagittor's fast and actually has pretty decent damage output just on its own steam, though not enormously tough and could easily get shot out from under the squad. It does give you some more mobile obsec though to go alongside those Hernkin, and the entire unit could be a fair bit tougher if you took them in the Irani Surta regulars. Toughness 8 Sagittor's does seem really quite good on paper. As mentioned previously, you could just get out one of those units turn 1 to camp on home field objectives for cheap and allow the rest of your force to move up. And in terms of other gear options, you could certainly give them hunter weapons or thane gear. They are perhaps a little bit more likely to get in range to deliver any damage dealing options like that, though in small 5 man units they might just be living to fire it once if the enemy is able to focus them down in return. Finally, here's one idea for just a massive brick of advancing Hearthkin warriors. Something to slog towards the midfield with some good support, hopefully tank any damage that the enemy can throw at it, and also hit back hard. Here I've taken 20 Hearthkin with Bolters, though I wouldn't necessarily have been against upgrading to the Ion Blasters. They're taking the full array of kit, one Medic, one Comms Array, and one Scanner. Good stratagem access, and ignoring cover seems great with this many shots. They've got two Magna Rail Rifles for 40 points. If they roll well and get their hits through, that could kill a vehicle in a single turn. There's two high las auto rifles for a little bit more volume fire and some extra AP, and the Thane upgrades himself to a concussion gauntlet, he's taken the half fist for an extra 1 CP, giving him 3 attacks at strength 8, AP minus 3, and either damage 3 or 4. Hopefully should punish any enemy elites for daring to charge these guys, and maybe take one or two of them down after they make the charge. I'd then be aiming to support them with some characters, which maybe might be advancing alongside some other units, like Iron Here Hearthguard as well. Perhaps cast Fortify on them from a Grimnir for Toughness 5 and a 6 plus fail no pain. Get them an Invul save from the Carl, and you could think about having that action and shoot Warlord trait in play as well. There'd be a unit that the opponent's really going to struggle to kill, so them doing an action is likely going to be more effort than the opponent can deal with to shoot them off. I do feel that with their short movement range, their threat range might be an issue. The opponent could just avoid them for a turn, then hit them hard. And for a similar role, you might want to have Exo Armor slogging up towards the enemy. It also seems solid enough for the same role. Perhaps the only downside with this massive investment on one unit though is that they are a bit on the expensive side. I think it wouldn't be the worst option in the world to just run them fairly cheap, maybe a unit entirely with bolters, and perhaps just a med pack and scanner. At least that way there'd still be only 11 or 12 points per wound, as opposed to more like 15 for these guys. So overall, I think that the Hearthkin Warriors are a fairly sturdy troops choice for the Leagues of Botan, and they do have really quite a lot going for them. As the faction's only obsec troops choice to fill detachments, they will be used basically regardless, but they do have options for great stratagem and character support. Only they and the Lamb Fortress have the terrifying Magna Rail weapons, 
It seems that they've got three different viable roles in game that I think that you could use for any of them. They're potentially decent damage dealers with judgment tokens, and their durability does seem okay with void armor with the possibility of a 5 plus invul and a medic. Even with that, I'm not sure they stand out on toughness wise, but they would be surprisingly tough to take down for 4 plus save infantry. They really don't have it all their own way though, they are very slow with a 5 inch movement and only auto advance 3 inches, so a lot of the time they're just going to be guaranteed not to be able to get to an objective. If they advance, they also give up all damage for the turn as well, which isn't ideal. Their shooting range is low, particularly so on their ion guns, so it often means they might be a unit that's moving forward, get shot by the enemy, and then have to counter-attack after they've taken casualties, which again isn't that fun. They're also not particularly great in combat against anything but light infantry. They could bully them okay with mass strength 4 attacks, but even with judgment tokens, you're not going to be killing terminators or anything. And even with their medic and invul advantages, 4 plus save infantry just won't like mass damage 1 fire of any sort. Most damage 1 fire is going to be pretty efficient against them, whether it's bolters, las guns, or assault cannons. Overall, despite all that, they seem usable. Fill out a battle line, fill some sagittors, or build big and support with characters. Three options that seem okay, and it's going to be interesting to see how people use them in practical lists. They are perhaps a unit that gives the opponent a fair amount of counterplay though, probably not a unit that we're going to see entire armies of, and perhaps best supported by the other scary things that the leagues of Botan have. So let me know your thoughts on the unit then, what squad builds are you eyeing up at the moment, and how much of a prominent part in a leagues of Botan list do you think they'll make, or will they just be minimum sized attachment fillers, or are they worth building around huge squads of them? If you've been enjoying the Leagues of Votan videos, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly be aiming to keep them coming, with new 40k videos just about every day, and a lot more for the Leagues to come. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.